left guessing. We are going to see that Death Knight uh, Demon Hunter versus the Windwalker Demon Hunter. Shaman versus Shaman, Cleave versus Cleave. Let's see who takes it. Chun Li, yeah. this is the reason why he left his team, is because he loves playing with Thugonomics. So, starting off this composition, this is something they've played in past years and not surprising to see. I think before dampening, the Death Knight is definitely favored, but deeper into dampening, that extra punch with the touch of death could be enough to burst down a target. This is the first time we've seen these compositions go head to head. Gorecki's Shaman as well going against Sidu Shaman, a bit unexpected. Uh, we would normally see Gorecki on Druid in this meta, but he feels the Shaman is a better pick. I feel like I'm watching a Legion tournament right now, <laughs> giving me flashback of these compositions. This is actually a comp chun -Li and Thugonomics have been playing together for quite some time. Now, of course, with Gorecki, it's going to be a little bit different, but they have good synergy, and what both Demon Hunters are trying to do is consistently land stuns onto the opposing Shaman, land their stuns, land their mana rest. It's going to be a game of mana in this matchup. I'm actually surprised not to see the Restoration Druid, but it's likely that these teams have practiced in war games and decided that the Shaman, really, really good with the Pack Spirit and Ghost Wolf, is able to actually going to be get, he's going to be able to get away better than a Restoration Druid. If a Restoration Druid was being trained down by these classes, he'd have to sit in bear form, not be able to escape, but the Shaman with the Ghost Wolf suppresses all of those snares and can easily kite around these pillars. I think also he may have watched all the Restoration Shamans from the European region yesterday with Greggy and Lontar, and then even just earlier today, Absturge. Shamans don't need a mana bar to keep healing their team. They've been tapped out quite often, deep and dampening, and been okay. So if you do get mana rifted to zero, the Shaman can still keep going. So it may be a premeditated decision to not play Druid, as if Druid does run out of mana, it doesn't have the same luxury to heal for that much longer into dampening. So Gorecki with more of a predictive play here, expecting a strategy to come out from Method Orange with that Demon Hunter and Death Knight and trying to counteract it with the Shaman pick over the Druid. Of course, Sidu, I think, is going to have a little bit more reps on Shaman. And when we get deeper into dampening, I'm curious to see if all those extra reps is going to pay off. Yeah, we'll definitely have to see. So basically with Pack Spirit, anytime the Shaman is in Ghost Wolf, he's going to be regenerating his health. And that's why you see Sidu and Gorecki just running around in Ghost Wolf. Training down Gorecki and Sidu with these talent choices is not going to be the best strategy. So what they're doing, looking for the mana risk, but they have to keep pressure on the DPS because that's going to be the only thing that tax as these Restoration Shaman's mana. If you just sit on Gorecki, he's just going to sit in Ghost Wolf. If you just sit on Sidu, he's going to sit in Ghost Wolf and just heal himself passively with that talent choice, with that Azurite trace, trait choice. Um, so I think it, it was very intelligent from both these teams. All right, Thugonomics getting targeted down here by Method Orange, but able to escape to safety. Huge advantage on that Demon Hunter over the Death Knight to be able to evade attacks by simply moving his character in the opposite direction and fell rushing to safety. Hex and crowd control secured onto Sidu, actually banking the boys his Gladiator's Medallion to break out of crowd control. Maybe an opening to force Trill's Darkness, and then as we step into Dampening, maybe get a kill. The boys are securing advantages and the lead moving into the rest of this match. Yeah, one of the advantages that the Windwalker Monk has is he has Mortal Wounds. So his Rising Sun Kick puts up a debuff, Mortal Wounds, and that reduces all incoming healing. That's going to be very effective, especially as the game goes on later. The consistent damage and spread pressure from a Death Knight should, in theory, be higher. So that's the advantage that Mez has on that Death Knight. And it will be interesting to see how those variations or the differences in these classes really add up as the game does go on later. Yeah, and with the introduction of Expel Harm, the Leech healing on the Demon hunters and the death strike of the death knight the restoration shamans can run around in ghost wolf easily maintaining their teams with riptide which is why this is likely to require some immense levels of dampening for either team to really get a big dent into each other's defenses we are getting close to that mark five minutes into the match healing starts to begin to be reduced by one percent and increase incrementally increasing over time and maybe around i'm expecting 35 40 percent we could to even see maybe a dampening record in this game looking at the mana situation with the restoration shamans if you guys want to start taking your bets here i'm starting to think it's probably in the range of 60 percent maybe i'm overreaching since the mana changes but with these top tier restoration shamans obviously the awareness of trill and thugonomics maxed out it's gonna be difficult on top of all that healing to really find a kill too early on Basically, the moment in the game which is going to be the most important is when dampening starts to really affect that pack spirit. That's going to limit Gorecki and Sidu from just sitting in Ghost Wolf. They have to actually get out, cast heals on themselves, and 
no longer will they be able to just passively heal through that damage, and that's where things are going to start to get real interesting. Chun-Li now getting really aggressive on Trill. Commits the touch of death and the leg sweep. Trill getting bursted down quite low. Blade Dance will avoid a little bit of it. Chun-Li in the meantime also taking some damage. Mez's pet actually doing quite a bit of work there on Chun-Li. You can see that sort of fire beam between Mez and his ghoul. The one that's up, it's going to be doing damage, so it's good to kite away from it and try to avoid it at all costs. Bugonomics dipping low here just as we hit into dampening. Gorecki gets crowd controlled up by Trill. Good follow up by Sidu. Clean crowd control execution from Method Orange and potentially nets themselves a kill. Gladiator safeguard providing Thugonomics some relief here with that blur reducing damage. But a quick play like that deeper into dampening and Thugonomics does not make it out alive. Yep, no question about it. That was such a scary moment for Thugonomics in the match, trading out a lot, but still having that darkness left. He has that safety net to fall back onto if he really needs to. Trill pushing forward, looking for a Mana Rift, not able to find it. Sidu actually trinkets out there, wanting to avoid that stun. Trill putting Mana Rift on Thugonomics just for damage. Hasn't been able to really find them on Gorecki in this matchup. Sidu pushing forward once again, lands a Hex on the Gorecki. Now Thugonomics could be in some trouble. Mez really tearing in. Trill as well. Thugonomics is going to have to kite away, and these are the moments we're looking for where Gorecki has to heal up his team. I just feel like Shaman with this pack spirit, way too durable. And although at the beginning it seemed like both teams just wanted to train the enemy Shamans, they realized quite quickly what that would mean. If Sidu can keep getting these hexes on Gorecki, he's definitely going to win the game for his team. The boys know that's a threat, so they're targeting down Sidu to take him out and deny that aggressive pressure that he was providing to the team. But with good positioning, they are unable to keep up the chase, instead opting to continue brawling it out in the midfield. Gorecki crossing. Sidu and Gorecki meet each other in midfield, and I do not think they're looking for hugs. Hex casted by Sidu gets denied. Now Gorecki looks to reverse with a hex of his own. Good denial and reversal on that crowd control. Trill in a bit of danger here as he dips low. The Shamans are going to be key to victory in this match. Yep, Trill getting low as well as Mez Ascendance pops up by Sidu, trying to top off his team. It's a good moment, but that's a big cooldown that the boys were able to squeeze out from Method Orange. Thugonomics still seems to be the target of choice for Method Orange as he kites away, looking to avoid a little damage. Earthen Shield Totem will deflect some of that from Gorecki, that swirling sands on the ground that will prevent a lot of the incoming damage. So look for the Shamans to place that on the ground during opportunities to burst for the other team just to keep their team nice and healthy. All right, Mana Rift Assault by Thugonomics towards Sidu. Neither Demon Hunter really able to secure any significant mana advantage, even with Mana Rift. I would say that Restoration Shaman is the best pick with Thugonomics did flow. Crowd control looks good, initiated here by Method Orange. Chun-Li in desperation to protect Thugonomics as he's holding on by a thread. Dampening really starting to ramp up, and you can definitely tell that the teams are starting to feel the pain. Yep, 20% dampening. Things are getting interesting. Trill, 50% health, as it looks like Chun-Li and Thugonomics have realized potentially the Demon Hunter is the best target. They make a swap over onto Sidu. Sidu just trading out his trinket immediately, avoiding Mana Rift at all costs. Gorecki's mana, although it seems like the boys have been more pressured in this matchup, Gorecki's just 100% mana. He can't spend his mana fast enough in this matchup as Thugonomics dips lower, Trill as well. Darkness still available for Thugonomics. He has his trinket, so he's still feeling relatively safe in this matchup as all four of these cleavers look to spread some pressure in the mid map. Mez activating that abomination, the giant creature making its way over to Thugonomics to deal out a ton of damage, but now Thugonomics reverses with the cast of a trail and trouble dips low. Spearling Totem forced first by Sidu. The boys are now ahead on cooldowns, but I do feel that crowd control execution has been in favor of Method Orange, and that could be more than enough to close the game, even if they are behind on defensive cooldowns. Grecki is finally starting to get a little more aggressive against Sidu, going toe-to-toe -to -toe and chasing them down, looking for hexes. It's up to the teams to stall them out and deny it for the Shamans. Mez in a bit of trouble here, and he is going to be a liability in dampening. Spirit Link Totem forced preemptively by Gorecki, expecting that incoming Hex, unable to deny it. Trades the defense before it lands, but the chain is not going anywhere. Continuing now with Mez's Asphyxiate. Thugonomics is low on health. They switch over to Sidu. Trill tries to protect them, but Chun-Li denies the protection. Sidu does not have that to rely on. He was really hoping to rely on that darkness, but it gets completely shut down. Now he's hoping that the Earthen Wall Totem will be enough. Will it? We're at 
28% dampening. It's not. He has to start retreating away. He cannot tank the amount of damage that the boys have available. Caught into another stun, getting bursted down, but barely hanging on somehow, some way. But no, ultimately going down. Thugonomics now caught into a stun, but preempting this attack had darkness placed, immuning the incoming cross kill. The boys are back, taking game one against Method Orange. The boys haven't even gone anywhere, right? Meth top eight last week. They have managed to make it to the top six this time around, but it's not looking too good. Chun Li and Thugonomics, that dynamic duo, Windwalker, Demon Hunter, dealt a devastating punch to Sidu in game number one, denying all of the defense that his team otherwise would provide with a perfect ring of peace. And that threat is still available here in game number two. Can Method Orange pull it off with this wild card Frost Death Knight selection? Well, it also increases the cooldown on Blade Dance. So that's another thing. It's not just the mobility, it's all these cooldowns. As long as he can keep up the delirium disease and that heart stop aura will do work. Touch of Death now gets activated for Chun-Li, looking for some burst. Chun-Li pushes in on Trill as he ports away. Trill seems to be the main pressure point in this matchup. We expected it to be Mez, but Trill getting lower and lower. Safeguard Prox, Touch of Karma gets Ooh. overlap. Sidu has to trick it and Spirit Link. What is going on for Method Orange? I mean, this is looking not that great for Method Orange. The boys are definitely in the driver's seat here in game number two. Finally, some counter pressure here towards Thugonomics as we are expecting him to be the target of choice with that heart, start, heart stop aura and delirium limiting his fell rushes. So Thugonomics has used two fell rushes. He's not going to see another one for some time, which means Mez gets to chop him up for the next almost probably 40 seconds at this point. Chun-Li getting cleave down as well. We see the fight being dragged closer to Sidu than Gareki, and it's very important as a Restoration Shaman to be as far away from the melee brawl as possible. Otherwise, you open yourself up to being interrupted, stunned, potentially death gripped into the fight. Gareki's looking like he wants to try and make a move here. Cross in center field. Thugonox pulls the trigger on that metamorphosis. Trill immediately transcendences away from the fight, and I don't think Thugonox can actually chase him. No, nope. He's so limited with that hard stop aura, so now Trill will get to reset, charge back into the fight, land a double leg sweep, pulling two gladiators medallions from both Chun-Li and Thugonomics. So the next time leg sweep swings around, they're not gonna have a way to get out and touch of death is available for Trill. So glad that Trill played it patient there. He's got a huge opening. Yeah, Thugonomics really not able to move too much in this matchup. You can see Chun-Li is actually playing Ride the Wind to help him out. In the meantime, uh -oh. Trill getting bursted down, has to kite away. Hard stop war gonna really limit Thugonomics' ability to chase Trail and Mez just sitting on him with the chains of ice, with the death group. Thugonomics just a sitting duck, which is not something you normally see from a demon hunter. He just cannot connect back to Trill. Trill turning his attention over to Chun Li. If we look at mana, Sidu has a little bit of a lead. Chun Li forced to trinket out of I, I'm not sure what he trinketed out there. Potentially a stun coming in from Trill. Like sweep just trying to avoid some damage. I'm not sure if Thugonomics can even afford to use Fell Rush to try and run away or if he needs it to chase down for a kill because he has to pick one or the other. He's not going to have enough of them to do both, which means his decision making becomes a lot more difficult here against this peculiar Frost Death Knight of Mez. Mana fairly even on both sides. Double leg sweep secured for Chun-Li. Trill's window of opportunity has been lost now with no major points of contention in terms of cool towns by the boys. It's unfortunate for Method Orange and they are I believe starting to fall behind on the cooldown front with both Mez and Trill taking heavy fire. Yeah, Trill and Chun Li sort of just chasing each other around in this match. That really is the main pressure point. Maybe they don't know how vulnerable the Frost Death Knight is. Pillar of Frost gets activated by the Frost Death Knight as he's looking to increase his damage, deal mega pain to Thugonomics and Chun Li, but Gareki seems to be able to heal through it quite easily. Or the Shield Totem almost available as well. Full stun now on Thugonomics as Mez and Trill are really laying in. Yep, Thugonomics definitely taking the heat here. Unable to move very much against this Frost Death Knight, and Trill knows that. He can just kite away, and Thugonomics is forced to attack Mez instead. Now, obviously, Mez can use Death Strike similar to Unholy Death Knight and heal himself back up just as effectively, although Runic Power is a lot more valuable in terms of Frost Death Knight damage, so he would reluctantly make that decision to Death Strike. But in Dampening, when Thugonomics switches to the Death Knight, the Death Strike heals less. Pressure now on Chun-Li here for Method Orange. They're trying to swing back in this fight. 
They've got a slight mana advantage over the boys as we edge closer to dampening, which I believe is going to be an inevitability between the compositions that the boys and Method Orange have brought to the table. They're just simply so durable in the current meta. Chun-Li with Fists of Fury flying, benefiting from that Turbo Fist, as we talked about in the pregame, which means he basically can't take any damage from Mez and Trill. But now that it's over, he's in a bit of trouble, stunned up at low health. And good calls by Gorecki saying, I got you with a couple healing waves and doesn't panic and overlap defensive cooldowns. Maledix committed here, dispelled instantly by Gorecki. Good communication on his part. Good shot calling so far. And that is what could net them the win here in game number two. Yes, sitting on Chun-Li, keep in mind, that's going to increase the cooldown on his transcendence, on his Fists of Fury, I believe. So it's going to be more difficult for him to redirect some of that damage and counter pressure as best as he potentially could. Throwing a little bit of trouble right now, activates the Diffuse Magic to get rid of the Maledic. Chun-Li in a leg sweep, still has a touch of karma. Gorecki trinkets out, trying to keep him aggressive. Chun-Li, or sorry, Trill, trades out to touch of karma as well onto Chun-Li to try to stay alive. See, trying to get line of sight to connect some heals with his Ascendance. Finally does. If we look at mana, that 3% dampening, Gorecki does have a decent lead. Yeah, at this point now, the fight is swinging in favor of the boys. Chun-Li's got touch of death rolling. How is Sidu going to deal with this? Trill rolls away. Thugonomics can't completely get there. Actually decides to respect the damage and give Spirit Link Totem. That now puts Sidu on the back foot. Caught in a leg sweep. Potential swap to him as well off the back end of this Spirit Link Totem. This could be devastating, especially if that happens later into dampening. I'm not sure if he'll even be able to recover, but... With Ghost Wolf and Thugonomics limited mobility, I, I think Sidu should be able to easily escape here, managing to scratch it off. And now Mez is low health in the swap, and deeper in dampening these swaps to Mez will be a critical point for Sidu to try and recover, one that he might not be capable of. Yep, Chun Li still a little bit vulnerable in this situation. He has the Trinket Karma, but if they can force that out, that would be big. Gorecki landing a huge heal on Chun Li to keep him stable. Trill still getting low with no defensive cooldowns. He is increasingly vulnerable. A nice death grip by Mez. Triple leg sweep setup coming in from Trill. Method Orange known for those plays. It's a good way to get some pressure. Chun Li forced to use the touch of Karma. Sidu sneaks in a hex on Gorecki. Nicely done. Good offensive push, which nets them that Karma from Chun Li. Yeah, both teams keep battling it out to keep that even footing, but Gorecki is just slightly ahead in this fight. Dampening's ramping, ramping up now at. 12% healing reduction, so things will begin to get quite fascinating. I want to see how the Frost Death Knight fares at 30% dampening in one of these swaps, or maybe just a committed attack. I don't think it's going to be too good, and even though he's limited the mobility of Thugonomics, he's a Frost Death Knight, his mobility is already limited, so Thugonomics doesn't really care if he's the target, unlike with Trill. Chun-Li trying to carry the team here on his back, getting pressure onto two points, but now Pillar of Frost is pulled for Mez. He wants to boost his damage a lot, and Chun-Li is desperately trying to retreat from that attack, but his movement is inhibited as well. He is unable to escape. We see Gorecki get gripped into a double stun. Thankfully, Thugonomics actually avoided it. Now trading Darkness, respecting this touch of death push by Trill, and looking to reverse the pressure, but even with Darkness, Chun-Li is not out of the woods yet. Yeah, Chun-Li getting low. Could be in danger. Trill as well as he ports away back to Sidu. Trying to get safe. Diffuse magic on that Maledic. Now Chun-Li. Maledict on him. He ports away. Gorecki caught into the incapacitate as Mez charges in. Asphyxiate on Gorecki. Both of these Windwalker monks are vulnerable. Trill is the one with Touch of Karma, so he's feeling confident pushing in just a little bit, but he's going to run away. Try to avoid a little bit of burst. Throwing in a Chi burst to get some Chi. So when he finally lands and gets to Chun-Li, he can get some damage rolling. Fist of Fury by Chun-Li, parrying all of these attacks and forcing Trill to run away. All right, mana still in favor of Gorecki. Spirit Link Totem coming up in 24 seconds, so Sidu will likely have that as a last lifeline to keep his team in the fight. They've definitely gotten more momentum in this game. That Darkness no longer available for Thugonomics, but still Trill in the back foot. Trade Such a Karma is able to avoid the fight. This is the situation where I'd like to see a switch over to Mez when Trill is able to kite. Now double stun secured, but double stun secured in reverse as Trill is in trouble. Danger to low five, two more seconds actually for Sidu. Spirit Link Totem now available. If he gets interrupted, though, he can't access it, managing to fake cast through get a healing wave but i don't think he's got enough healing here in dampening spearling totem actually traded for gorecki 
Things are getting tight for both teams here. They just simply can't heal through this amount of dampening with such limited resources in terms of mana. And suddenly, Method Orange stay in the fight and continue swinging back. Yeah, Chun Li in a lot of trouble. Ascendance gets used by Gareki. He still has some mana, so connecting these healing surges. Chun Li kiting away as well with the ride to win, but Mez just assaulting him, ch charging after him, making sure that he is continuing the damage for his team. Trill pushing in, all four cleavers once again reconvening. Hex on to Sidu, nicely done by Gorecki. Sidu's mana is a little bit behind Gorecki right now, but most of the pressure is on to Trill, who has to run away, activates the fortifying brew, gets out of line of sight, places his port, Fists of Fury by Chun-Li and Trill. Both of them just parrying each other's damage, not really getting too much work done. Asphyxiate on Gorecki, leg sweep on Chun-Li. Trill caught into the Chaos Nova. Both teams could fall at any moment. Trill getting lower, Spiritling Totem gets dropped out by Sidu. Gorecki does not have the same luxury. Chun-Li might have to run away, but he's just using the Earthen Shield Totem to tank this damage. I don't know if he's going to be able to tank it, though. Fist of Fury from Trill. Sean Lee's going to fall, and Method Orange stay in this series. All right, so this is one of the first times that we've gotten to see this comp play out. This is one of the first peaks. That we have to see what can get done here. The boys have a compositional advantage, we think, after what we saw in the Grand Arena. Maybe there's tweaks that Method Orange could make. I think if they locked in board, which they did, that will give them a little bit more of an edge in this matchup. See, you're playing Dwarf in game number one. Not necessarily the best, especially against a cleave setup like Windwalker, Demon Hunter, where you're going to be sitting those stuns, and that's going to be where you take most of the damage. All right, Chun Li getting stunned on his first Fist of Fury. A bit unfortunate for him. A lot of his damage negated by Trill. Gorecki locked down in crowd control. Chun Li, the target here for Method Orange as Mez leads the charge, activating that abomination. And Chun Li. He's on the run, trying to escape to safety, but really there is no safe place for him as Trill continues the pursuit. Now activating that Maledix, absorbing even more healing from Gorecki, potentially pulling a touch of karma very early on. Double Chaos Nova secured by Trill. Mez gripping Gorecki in, not able to find any crowd control off the back of it. Now Chun-Li looks to reverse targeting down Trill with a wind shear into a hex here by Gorecki, not able to get the hex. A bit unfortunate for Gorecki, would have liked to get a good crowd control chain there. Now it's going to set him back. Yep, good pressure on Chun-Li, opting into the Fortifying Brew this game, so he's going to be a little bit tankier than when he was playing the Ride the Wind, but does, of course, lose that utility, but I think it's a fair trade, especially if he is the main target. Having that ability, you can rotate through with your Diffuse Magic, with your Touch of Karma, is definitely going to be strong for Chun-Li in the long game. The result of Game 1 was that Sidu was the target of Chun-Li and Thugonomics, and the mobility of a Windwalker and a Demon Hunter was more than enough to overwhelm him, even with the advantages that Ghost Wolf brings. Now, with the Frost Death Knight limiting that mobility, Sidu really wasn't a target in game number two, and he never got pressured. But here in game three, without that Frost Death Knight to protect him, he is likely to be a kill target later into the match, as dampening is expected between these two teams. Chun-Li getting imprisoned at low health, an interesting choice here by Trill, as they try to set up Burst off the back of it. But with no crowd control on Gorecki, he easily responds. Yeah, Trill actually just using the Mana Rift for the additional damage on Shan Li in those stun lock combos. Darkness gets dropped, Ring of Peace gets used, Sidu has to run away, that's the Astral Shift, that was a touch of death from Chun Li. Chun Li really has to think twice about chasing him though, unfortunately not going to be able to. Oh. Mez and Trill just destroying Chun Li as he is caught into the Chaos Nova and the Fell Eruption. Earthen Shield Totem gets dropped out by Gorecki, helping Chun Li tank some of this damage. Fist of Fury gets tossed out as well, but Chun-Li chasing down Sidu really isn't an option. As Sidu, he has the Ghost Wolf he can just kite around in. Chains of Ice coming in from Mez, the Death Grip. Eventually, even though Chun-Li has so much mobility, he's not going to be able to reconnect. Chun-Li portaling back to recover here while his team is sitting through extended crowd control. Paralysis on Sidu, but no setup, no damage, and really getting denied during that moment that would normally be scary for his team. Fist of Fury defending himself here with that turbo fist as well as dealing some damage back to the team. Sidu at least with a significant mana lead in this specific match. A lot better at least than game number one. Everything will be on Sidu here to secure a victory. He needs to play more efficiently than Gorecki. They're doing a good job at shutting down the hexes and then potentially reversing them as Sidu crosses to midfield. Gets denied with Ring of Peace with the Maledix. Double connect. Chun-Li gets bursted down in a stun. Trinket Touch of Karma is forced to be traded out and the pressure from Method Orange overall 
ball is much more significant here in game three. If they can win this swing match, they'll have the compositional advantage for game five. It's very important that they can find a victory here off this momentum. Yeah, Gorecki actually traded out a spiritling totem as well. So now Chun Li, very vulnerable, only really has to defuse magic. Chaos Nova is used. And with the way Trill and Mez are playing this, Chun Li, he's been having to run away so much. And with the way the Windwalker Monk works, the less time you have on a target means the less blackout kicks you get which is going to reset that fist of fury and that rising sun kick every time you use it it gets lower but when you're having to run away the entire game you you lose the opportunity for that cooldown reduction and it really limits the amount of damage you're able to do chun li is having a hard time getting things going Greki still locked out of the fight for a couple more seconds extending that chain is mez chun li may need to make a trade Greki decides to for him but that gladiator safeguard shield procced regardless so a bit of an overlap in terms of defense opening the cracks on the wall that is the boys here as method orange try to keep their advantage but mana isn't looking so amazingly well for c2 anymore it's a lot more equal touch of death activated chun li trying to counter aggress trill with the evasive maneuvers avoiding him as much as possible denying a huge burst moment by chun li good evasive maneuvers from trill yeah very nicely done chun li finally gets topped off goreki's mana actually a little bit ahead he pulled ahead of sidu in this game mana rift gets dropped out on a goreki once again and Chun Li, good mana burn there by Trill, which evens up the mana in favor of Sidu just a little bit. Mez now seems to be the main focus point for the boys as they look to pressure him down, dip to low 50% HP. Sidu into the paralysis. Sidu, or actually Mez could be in a lot of trouble. He really doesn't have many defensives. He doesn't have Icebound Fortitude available for him. I guess he's not using that as a talent. And uh, Mez now could be in a lot of trouble. All right, into dampening. The Death Knight does become a lot squishier, which means he just takes more damage because his Death Strike is not going to heal him as much. Although the crowd control is relentless from Method Orange in this specific match. With Trill running that extended imprisonment, Gorecki can be locked out of the fight for five seconds at a time when Trill decides to pull the trigger on that. Mez then continues that five seconds by an additional two to three with Asphyxiate, and with that chain of crowd control, they can take Chun-Li down, and Method Orange can find victory, keeping themselves alive in the upper bracket in the swing match. Thugonomics is going to trade Darkness to keep the, keep the fight going, but the mana is basically tapped at this point. The cooldowns have all but run dry. Chun Li on the run to stay alive. Yeah, Method Orange have found the answer in this matchup, it would seem. Chun Li doesn't really have too much left to work with. Gorecki does have his Trinket Spirit Links rotating back up. Stun now on to Sidu. We saw the boys close out the game with an all in on Sidu, but it just doesn't seem like that's what they're looking for in this game. Chun Li's just too pressured to make that happen, but that might be exactly what they need. Although Mez and Trill are rotting down low, Sidu's mana isn't doing too great either. Chun Li basically has nothing left. Double Chaos Nova does land. Gorecki trinkets out into a Fell Eruption by Trill, into a full imprisonment. Chun Li very vulnerable needs to get a fist of fury up or something to avoid some damage managed to find it to get that parry up Mez now getting low Sidu has to trink it out ascendance will be used and that ascendance is a massive healing for Sidu for method orange to keep Mez alive yeah but even still at 12% dampening and increasing Mez could be a point of weakness for the boys I do believe that Mez has opted out of Icebound Fortitude for Lichborn which is why Icebound Fortitude is not appearing on the UI effectively Lichborn is just a one minute version of Icebound Fortitude without the additional effect of becoming immune to stun so Mez gets more rotational defense but can't get out of stuns like the stun that he's currently in and taking a lot of damage from cedar tries to trade earthen wall totem to stay alive drops spirit link totem as well suddenly cedar on the ropes here cooldown wise mez could be in trouble the boys rotate back in terms of defense but no mana on either side as we battle this out to the bitter end chun lee trying to kite away trill on one side mez on the other fist of fury not getting full value double chaos nova stun on gorecki chun lee gets lower diffuse magic on the mallet as he's looking to make an escape looking to make a potential setup here on c to incapacitate into a leg sweep he gets gripped away mess with the chains of ice chaos nova comes in can they take c down chun li he has a touch of karma he can play aggressive here c getting lower and lower that's the astral ship can the boys turn around this game with an all-in on c once again c trying to kite away touch of karma doing so much damage the safeguard procs but c has completely nothing left no trinket the only thing keeping him alive is the peels from Mez and Trill. Chun-Li now in some trouble. Spearling Totem gets dropped out by Gorecki. 
and Sidhu manages to stabilize. Trill still has darkness in his back pocket and Chun-Li on the ropes with not much left to keep going. Both teams totally tapped on mana. This is the swing match. Method Orange have to win this if they want the advantage. Moving into game five, they've been setting themselves up so excellently throughout this entire fight and they're looking to close this out. Gorecki doesn't have anything really to keep this going. Double Chaos Nova. Chun-Li breaks out, retreats his, with that ring of peace, but Mez charges through it with the death's advance. Good timing on Mez's part to stay on target. Greki locked out of the match with that imprisonment. Thakonomics doing what he can, stunning up the team, but these stuns are so diminished. Chun-Li portals back to Kite and stay in the fight, but Trill is in hot pursuit. greki has got nothing, but chun Li still on the run, going and taking a road trip at this point. Yeah, nicely done by Chun Li. This kiting has been beautiful, buying Gorecki a little bit of time, but Gorecki with no mana left in the tank. He can't keep Chun Li alive. Now a full stun, fell eruption. Chun Li getting lower. He needs Ooh. 10 seconds on the touch of karma. Diffuse magic might be enough to buy him that seven seconds left before he can use that ability to try to make an all in attempt on Sidu once again, because I'm not seeing many openings here for the boys. They're just consistently having to run away. They've got no mana. Sidu's doing such a good job regenerating his mana right now as the boys have no pressure but touch of death gets used chun Li trying to reverse the pressure onto trill but blur's coming up soon he has the darkness trill should be completely fine i think chun Li is the one that might fall double stun touch of karma on basically no health and no mana for the boys it's still the swing match they're gonna lose their game five advantage if they fall here and method orange are looking good Darkness still available for Trill. Chun Li trades fortifying Brew, but at 31% damage, there's no way that's going to be enough. Turbo Fist at least protects him. No, Trill ducks through it with Fell Rush, takes the kill from behind, and Method Orange take the swing match. Catching up with the boys, and we already know Super Frogs is in that lower bracket, so they have a real opportunity here to actually climb those standings and, and get some of those points back. Knock somebody down and also keep on climbing. Method Orange's goal right here. The gates are now open. Let's see if they can take this one home or if the boys are going to bring it all the way to a game number five. I think Chun Li is actually, is he playing a blood up? No, he's not. I don't think he's playing human, but Specs are taking quite a bit of damage very early on. We'll have to see how Gorecki's mana fares against Sidu in this cleave matchup. His damage is going to be very high for both teams. Mez and Smexen seem to be the target of choice. Gorecki able to heal through so far. Already, is he sneaking away for a drink already? Gorecki does not want to fall behind. He throws out the iron bark realizes the burst damage is gone and he goes to reset his mana as soon as possible. Actually, he's not. He's just getting in cat form. He did manage to get full health. Is he playing Feral Affinity? A lot of questions for me. I mean, yeah, he's playing Feral Affinity. Uh, Smexen is just taking a lot of damage early on here and I'm not totally sold on this Restoration Druid pick unless maybe his Feral Affinity can add a little bit of extra damage. But while he's in cat form, he's not healing and Smexen and Chun-Li are taking the most amount of damage I've seen a team take before dampening. Finally exchanging blows back here towards Mez and Trill. Trying to kick up some heat. Sidhu will deny it though with this Ascendance, boosting his area of effect, healing quite effectively too. Top off the team, triple stun by Trill. Gorecki the target, maybe potentially moving forward. And on that Druid, he's a lot more exposed, I believe, to Mana Rift. I think Shaman is the only healer that can deal with that Mana Burn effect effectively. And that I feel like this is a throwaway by Gorecki switching over to Druid. Yeah, he's not he's not Master Shapeshifter either, so he's not getting that additional damage. It seems like a, definitely a weird choice. Smexing getting swapped to up top. Gorecki, he's not going to have any time to drink in this matchup, but I think that's one of the vulnerabilities of the Restoration Druid in a cleave setup like this. Sidhu should be able to hold on a stun now onto Gorecki. He's going to be very vulnerable, and uh, you bet that Method Orange knows exactly what's going on, that he is Feral Affinity. He's not going to have that form, the bear form, uh, Frenzied Regeneration if he really needs it. So if Gorecki gets a little bit over-aggressive, I think Trill and can make a swap, really tax his mana. Gorecki looking for a drink. Trill is not going to allow that. Like I said, demon hunters normally like to hunt demons, but they also like to hunt resto druids that sit down and try to regenerate their mana. Good pressure here for Smexen and Chun-Li onto Mez and Trill. See you trying to play catch up. No ascendance available. Might have to drop the spirit link totem. And that's one of the advantages that Gorecki will have is his healing is stronger than Sidhu's. Um, at this point, although CD should be able to hold on to a little bit more mana when he doesn't have the Ascendance, things can get scary quite quickly. Yeah, most certainly. 
Dampening is going to be a necessity, I think, in this matchup as well, even with the restoration Druid changeover. I feel like Greki isn't running Feral Affinity or Method Orange haven't really clued into him running it because as, with a Death Knight and a Demon under your team, I feel like targeting the Druid is definitely a necessity. Mez under fire here, dipping low, may need to exchange some Runic Power in order to use Death Strike and stabilize himself. It is definitely a bold move by Smexin to go into the Death Knight domain, especially when it is Lord Mez you face head to head, but he does it defiantly here in what is match point. Should he lose and be knocked down to the lower bracket, you definitely want to be staying up in that upper bracket, have a better chance of taking the entire cup. Mez has been under fire start to finish. Cedu still locked out of the match. Extended crowd control, trying to catch a couple heals, but struggling. Yeah, definitely difficult. Mez getting lower. Cedu trying to find the heals in this matchup as Mez does get low. But keep in mind, the Restoration Shaman Mastery, quite powerful when people are low HP. Cedu not having as much faith as I do in that Shaman Mastery, dropping the Spirit Link Totem as Mez gets lower. Great pressure here from Smex and An Chun Li. Touch of, death, touch of Death does get used. Mez could be in a lot of trouble as Darkness gets dropped. Good trade by Trill, ultimately saving Mez's life in this situation. The one advantage that Chun Li's team's got is mortal wounds on that Windwalker, reducing healing by 25%. And the Mez's team doesn't have that advantage, although even without it, starting to chomp up both Smexin and Chun-Li. Mez still, though, in trouble! Is ultimately gonna go down, and that was a lot quicker than I expected. Smexin on that Death Knight dishing out the Con Will it be good enough to give them the win in this series? Game five, Sam I am gonna be the deciding factor here. I hope he's hydrated. I mean, if they're taking advice from me, I don't know what they're doing. I thought it made sense against the Restoration, Shaman, but Root Solar Beam can not be combined together against a Druid as they can shape shift out, and you lose a huge crowd control when facing one. I'm not sure how Samayam is going to surmount some offensive pushes because of that. Ooh, Trill dropping the darkness instantaneously on Sidu, but it was overlapped with the bark skin. Sidu really not having faith, or there was some sort of miscommunication there. Sidu could still be in a little bit of trouble. Gorecki moving in, looking for a cyclone on Samayam, denying his damage, and it's likely the boys, they're just going all in on Sidu, no darkness, Iron Bark is used, Thorns used as well. Can Sidu get away? He's gonna be tanking out this damage in bear form, but now with no damage reduction left, he could be in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Or not. <laughs> I think it's not. Sidu gets, oh, wait. Gorecki is playing Feral Affinity again, jumping on Sidu. Gorecki just loves this Feral Affinity, and I'm wondering if Trill is gonna try and punish that. He immediately switches to Gorecki to try and build some pressure in multiple places. But while he's attacking Gorecki, Chun-Li and Smexin will then be left open to build up some big damage. We did see massive cooldowns exchanged earlier on for Sam I Am's incarnation with Anti-Magic Zone and Icebound Fortitude. Anti-Magic Shield, three of those buttons below Smexin. Those provide good damage reduction and all of them were used at the same time, which means during this moment, he would normally be vulnerable. However, before dampening, Death Strike, I believe, should be enough, but he can't use it when he's stunned. He does get stunned out of line of sight. Smexin needs to make his way back up soon. Gladiator safeguards, soaking up some hits, but Gorecki still crowd control. Managed to connect Iron Bark right before that bash hit, stabilizing Smexin. I'm not gonna count this composition out just yet. They're definitely showing that they've got some pretty good pressure. Yeah, definitely. It seems like Sidu does have the mana lead, although Gorecki has managed to sneak off and land a drink as he moves forward. There it is once again, the pounce done over onto Trill. No follow-up, but I like that he has that available. Gorecki didn't actually get any mana there, so although Sidu has been pressured far more in this game, his mana is a lot better, so if he can just hold on for a little bit longer, they might end up securing the mana lead. Trill, or Chun-Li, sorry, still all over Sidu in this matchup, Ironbark and Thorns. And keep in mind the positioning Sidu has. He's doing a really good job with that wild charge up to this Oop. pillar, but he gets death grip back. That's unfortunate. Now he's kind of stuck here. Oop. Sitting Doc with the leg sweep landing. Oop. Sidu in a lot of trouble. All three members of the boys looking to close out this game. Method Orange, they oh, have no! to oh, They might get knocked down to the lower bracket, and the boys have done it in this series. Knocking down Method Orange. Feed versus the fake Zebras. We're all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? And keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth.